Good evening, welcome to Trending at 10 p.m. with me, Vishnu Shom. As the Army Chief reminds young people in Jammu and Kashmir that there will be no Azadi, they will not win against the Indian Army in clashes, we ask whether the wishes of political leaders in the state that there should be a ceasefire during the month of Ramzan is at odds with the security situation in Jammu and Kashmir, where stone pelters are targeting not just security forces, but also now tourists and even children on school buses. This is without any doubt one of the worst phases in the state. But can we move beyond binary security solutions to something that also involves a political solution? That's what we're looking at this evening. But first, a quick look at some of the stories which have been trending on NDTV.com. Finally, the Aadhaar hearings end after 38 days. Uh, it is the second longest hearing ever. The Supreme Court reserves its verdict. That's one of the big stories we've been tracking on NDTV.com. Another big story which has been trending, China releases teaser images of what appears to be its first stealth bomber of flying wing design. What does this mean for India or for that matter, the United States? Another big story, a 15-year-old is saved from child marriage. Her dream is to become a doctor. Those have been some of the big stories we've been tracking today. But let's just move quickly to our top story today. The situation in Jammu and Kashmir and the seeming mismatch between what the security establishment is talking about and what political leaders are saying. Joining us uh, is the former uh, Army Chief uh, General Bikram Singh. We're also joined by uh, Gohar Gilani, the political analyst and journalist. Uh, Rafi Ahmed Mir, the PDP spokesperson. Sushil Pandit, the publisher of Prasna. Thanks sir, very much for being with us. And Behbab Agarwal of the BJP. Um, let me just come across uh, to you first, uh, Mr. Mir. How do you propose to have a ceasefire during the Ramzan period, during the Yatra period, if your own partner, the BJP, says that that's not acceptable to them? Yes, uh, I would like to tell you that this is not the first time that such demands have been there. And it is not proposal of uh, PDP only. The meeting which was held yesterday under the chairmanship of Chief Minister Mahbubha Mufti, it was participated by all the mainstream leaders of the state and especially uh, elected leaders of the state, people who have been elected yeah, by the Yeah, but the, the BJP, people, your partners don't want it. Yeah. Their wa waves. So the government doesn't want it. They were divided, as they usual. Were, <coughs> they, I will, I, I, I'll, com I, I'll complete. Okay. I'll reply that also. BJP is our ally and they were also part and parcel of the uh, meeting. It was discussed threadbare and it is not the first time that such demands have been there. If you recall that this has happened months before also during, ta during tenure of Atal Bihari Vajpayee and this is a very good result that moment. No, I, 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 I accept, I accept what you're, you're saying, sir. I completely understand where you're saying you believe from the bottom of your heart that there has to be some sort of political initiative. I understand that. But I'm just trying to say that it can yes. never work because as usual, the PDP and the BJP are at odds. So this being the case, I mean, what? It's, no, it's it, 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 you see, you see, if you, uh, my, my view, my party's view and the view of the other leaders is if it's workable for the um, uh, Jammu and Kashmir people, if it, it gives us some sigh of relief, if there, uh, we reduce killings, then why, why not to go with this? If there are some political parties, maybe our own ally, yes. but we, we can convince them, we need to talk to them. Okay. Maybe if they have some apprehensions, uh, they, we'll they can ask be worked them what out. They I don't feel think about this issue. Wrong. But because I just want to go across... Primarily, primarily, primarily one minute. Prim, pr so one second, sir. I just want to go across to General Bikram Singh. From a security standpoint, sir, uh, is it at all feasible to say that between this date and this date, we will not, there will not be any encounters, there will not be any anti-terror operations. Well, uh, Vishnu, I, uh, you know, uh, I don't think it's a correct recommendation that has come from the, uh, the political leaders and that also from the uh, chief minister. Uh, for only one reason that, uh, you know, she being the head of the unified headquarters, uh, the apex security mechanism, which actually, you know, plans, uh, coordinates and conducts the uh, counter proxy war operations in Jammu and Kashmir, you know, coming from her, uh, I think I, I think it's, it's not correct because the, the the violence levels have been very very high in the recent past, and you see in the way you know the terrorists have been interfering with the disrupting the operations of the security forces, 
the way they've been stone printing, you just in, the, in your preface, you just brought it out how things are. With this kind of security environment, vitiated security environment, I don't think we should be going on for it. The second point is, you know, technically ceasefire is always between either two states uh, or, you know, uh, perhaps the, the two armies. You, you don't have ceasefire being done by, by the army or the government with the terrorists. And the terrorists who are questioning <coughs> the, the writ of the government of India, the state government, who are questioning and, you know, undermining the constitution of India, uh, how do you expect the army not to continue with the operations? I, I fail to understand. Yes, we do respect this holy month of Ramzan. Having been a core commander over there, we make sure that we, we, we uh, have people-friendly operations which are highly intelligence-based to ensure that minimum inconvenience is given to the population. We do that and we respect the sensitivities of our, of our people, our people from Jammu and Kashmir. So we make sure they are able to go and, you know, recite, uh, you know, uh, namaz. They can go to the mosque whenever they want to. They can go through their rituals. So all those sensitivities are respected by the military. But yes, we cannot put our guard down. And all we right. cannot allow the terrorists to have a free run. Okay. And please also see just one more point. If you analyze the insurgencies all over the world, Vishnu, you will find this is one month when, the, when, the, when the, there has been a spike in the uh, violence levels. The maximum fines are conducted during this period. And I witnessed seen, that as a court and, commander and, you know, over there. This period and the reason includes is that the period of the yatra, when we've seen attacks on the yatra in the past. General, I take your point no, completely. Uh, I want to uh, put that across uh, to Gohar uh, Gilani. Mr. Gilani, the problem uh, is if you look at the issue of stone pelters at this stage, you know, they were targeting the army, they were preventing the army from carrying out anti-terrorist operations. Now they are targeting tourists. A tourist has died for, you know, I mean, in a state where tourists were the most welcome, perhaps than any other state in this country. Kashmiris love tourists coming in. It's been central to the ethos of what it has meant to be a Kashmiri. Tourists are being killed. A child on a school bus was severely injured. A school bus was pelted with stones. So my question is this, are these targeting, uh, are these politically motivated attacks or is this random acts of violence which have gone completely out of control in Jammu and Kashmir, stone pelting specifically? Uh, Mr. Vishnu, uh, I think uh, you had to go through uh, the reactions and responses from Kashmir's very vibrant civil society. Uh, even for people from the Azadi camp and resistance camp uh, from Gilani who termed it as the, it's a shameful moment for Kashmir and uh, Mr. Mirwais, the Srinagar based Mirwais, he called it an act of hooliganism and the civil society coalitions based in Kashmir, Srinagar, all of them in one voice condemned and deplored the act in which uh, one uh, boy from Chennai uh, got unfortunately killed. And, and also the act of stone pelting which happened in Shupaya on a school bus. Uh, there is no social approval, no social sanctity to any act of hooliganism uh, that will take place on the soil of Kashmir. And you're right, you know, people are hospitable and they love their tourists. And that's why, you know, Kashmir is uh, safe for tourists, but unfortunately it has been made unsafe for the local populace. And we have lost six, 600 civilians uh, during the civilian protests uh, because the army and armed forces, uh, police and paramilitary are using brute force, pellet guns, and, and live ammunition is fired at civilian population. But as far as these two incidents which you pointed out, there is no social approval to such acts on, on Kashmiri soil. But you see, Mr. Gilani, I, I, the, the point is that, you know, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a situation when it comes to who attacked who first, it goes round and round. The fact of the matter is security forces do not open fire either with pellet guns or with tear gas. They do not do a lati charge unless they are attacked first. If they are attacked, it is within their rights, not uh, just no, the see, security I, I, I forces. I don't think, I don't think as, that as is, Mr. Vishnu, I don't think that is the case to, to, because I am on the ground. I am, I am on the ground. There is maximum uh, force and brute force is used uh, when it comes to protesters in Kashmir. And if you see but that the what force happened in has Kutua, to be brutal. I mean, for rapists. But, but Gilani, two Mr. Gilani, Gilani the, 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 the point rapists, is when and force they were is provided used, security, force is but brutal. On Kashmiri soil, even there is nothing there is called less force or more force. People are being fired. You know, I mean, if, you, if, if and, people and are shot with, with their you know, lives, shells are fired, then, 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 then they face the consequences. And that is the difference. You know, it's not a rap on the knuckles, sir. This is it has to be a proper a proper response. Mr. Gilani, make a point. 
You no, see, uh, Mr. Vishnu, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, you please understand my point. My point is that in Katwa, the same police, the same paramilitary gives safe passage, gives security, provides security to those who use the Indian national flag. Do you want me to bring up Shopian in 2009? Are you ready to debate on Shopian in 2009? Let's try let's the let's look for solutions. But on Kashmir's turf, pellet guns, tear gas shells and bullets are fired at... Pellet no, but what about the poor, the poor, what about the poor army how, soldiers how who was who was surrounded in a particular area, who suffered, one of whom was hit on the head so brutally that he had to be airlifted out of this situation? When there was a mob of more than three, four hundred people who assembled over there, what does anybody do? You know, I, it's it's uh, uh, counter attacks take place. I mean, uh, 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 because of the security forces being attacked, that has to stop. Stone pelting is incredibly difficult, Mr. Gilani. How does anybody deal with this? By calling them civilians. That is why. Can I can I come in? Just one second, sir. I want to bring my uh, other panelists in. Uh, as well. Uh, Weber, I know you have a point to make, but I, I just want to go across uh, to Mr. Pandit. We can talk about what came first, the security person or the stone pelter. We've, we've done it for months, we've done it for years. We can do it easily on this program. My point is, in a situation like this, what is the political solution? It cannot be an, a, a military solution at the end of the day. I don't think anybody wants a military solution. The military fulfills, the security forces fulfill a role. They are not the solution to this. So what is the political way for I, the Prime Minister is going so? <clears throat> I agree. Uh, we'll talk about political solutions. But the solution that has been offered by the Chief Minister on the eve of Prime Minister's visit, let me tell you how she arrives at it. And that is not the kind of politics we need. I know it from the say-so of a person who attended the meeting. Yes. The all-party meeting had no agenda. People came in without knowing as to what they are going to discuss. A gentleman called Engineer Rashid, who is an independent yes. MLA, he proposes yes. a ceasefire. It is not even discussed properly. Forget having a consensus around it. Mrs. Mehbooba Mufti steps out in front of cameras and says, we have reached a consensus, it's an all-party decision to ask for a ceasefire from Government of India. And the Deputy Chief Minister stands there smiling and nodding. Less than 24 hours later, his party denies it. Completely denies it. Now, few things. This Chief Minister is Chief of the Unified Command. Mm -hmm. Ceasefire is a security operation under Unified Command. Has she discussed it there? Has she discussed it with the Home Minister of India? Has she discussed it with the Defence Minister of India? Has she discussed it? even with the governor? Has she discussed it with the army chief? Has she discussed it even with the northern army commander? It is a unilateral decision which was taken. Now, the point is, but it is such an important demand. It's a political decision that's taken, hence no, no, it was no. not... She is confronting a prime minister with a populist demand, riding over everyone else, with an implication on national security, and creating a fait accompli. If right. the Prime Minister denies it, he has to bear the, the, the appropriate of it, that he is perhaps a warmonger. If he concedes it, he jeopardizes nation's security. This is not what you do with the Allies. Okay, this so is they not were what run, you do in a coalition run, government. They were, they were other political parties, your bottom line is, were run roughshod in this meeting, yeah, no, where, so, so where Mehbooba Mufti arrived at a conclusion which the BJP clearly doesn't agree so with. By, and others are by also making such a demand publicly without going through the processes of keep getting people on board who are supposed to agree with it if, if it happens. It's a step back perhaps, not a step is, forward. It is a chicanery. It's, it's, a, it's a step. Chicanery. Okay. 